Look, check this out. Sometimes you can actually lose weight on the scale and still get fatter. Ooh, I like this. Ooh, skinny fat. Dude, I, I, now I remember the first time this happened to a client of mine, and they were so befuddled. A great word, right? Befuddled. Wow, yeah. They were so flabbergasted. I'll use another <laughs> word. That, uh, that they were like, they were depressed about it. And so what happened, so I'll, I'll tell the Bro, story. Bro, do you remember when this first happened to you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, I was devastated. Yeah, so so what happens is, and I'll tell the story of my client. So she did an extreme Kerfuffled. diet, no. did an extreme diet and lost 10 pounds on the scale. I tested her body fat percentage and her body fat percentage went up a percent. And she was like, how is this possible? The scale has went down. It doesn't make any sense. And I said, look, I said, body fat percentage is a percentage of your overall body weight. So if you lost 10 pounds but seven pounds was muscle and three pounds was body fat, you are smaller, but now your body fat is a larger percentage of your overall body weight because you've lost muscle. So, and this happens to people sometimes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They'll lose weight and they've lost muscle through either doing just tons of cardio and cutting their calories too low and whatever. And then they are smaller but flabbier versions of themselves with a slower metabolism. They can't figure this out what happened. This was always a hard conversation when you get the body fat dunk tank uh, to come in yeah, and start to do these competitions. Up. And um, yeah, and that would be the information that they would receive it was like, wow, but now my, my, my entire composition of body fat increased. Like, how is that even possible? This didn't, ju this didn't just happen sometimes. This happens most of the time. Yeah. And I'll never forget when I brought the dunk tank in for all my trainers. So we did a competition. So this is when it really came full circle oh, for me. Oh, this is hitting the ego so I kinda, of trainers. Oh, bro. So I kind of seen it with clients. And when you when it's a client, part of that is you're wondering if, oh, maybe they the, the adherence, right? Maybe they weren't listening to what you said or yeah. maybe they weren't training that hard or maybe whatever, right? You're, you're, you're kind of, as a trainer, you're going like, oh, I wonder how honest they're being with me about what they said they were doing. Well, I did this competition. At this time, I have like 20-some trainers. I believe Justin's part of this group. And there's like 20-something trainers. We decided to do, I put money on the line, you know, who can get, you know, the change, the, the greatest change in body fat percentage over a course of like three months. And so everyone's all in on this. And when we go and get dunked, I'd say more than half of my trainers, including myself on the first one, my body fat percentage went up. And I mean, this is after me like consistently dieting, training consistently, not mm -hmm. fucking up anywhere. And I was pissed. And I remember everybody thought the dunk tank was inaccurate. But what it really highlighted is how easily you can overtrain and undereat. Yep. Even people that are that, that advanced understand nutrition and exercise really well. How, what a fine line that is when you are in a caloric deficit and, and you're also training like five, seven days a week like mm -hmm. most of these trainers were, how easily you can drop 10, 15 pounds on the scale and all it takes, right? You lose 10 pounds on the scale. All it takes for the body fat percentage to go up in a situation like that, it's not as difficult as you think. 10 pounds come off the scale and six of it is muscle mm -hmm. and four of its fat and you got fatter mm -hmm. even though you're 10 pounds lighter on the scale this was mind-blowing for all my trainers and a lot of them were debating oh it's not true i look better i feel better it's like nah bro you lost muscle speed because speed is not in your benefit with with losing weight well no. what happens is that it, what happens is and this happens to clients it happens to trainers is they decide they're going to get shredded or lean out. Yeah, they overdo it. And they re, yeah, they they cut back dramatically on calories. Mm -hmm. They increase activity. And then they just watch the scale. You're and they in a watch starvation state at that point your body's trying to reserve as much energy and as possible. And it's it's deceiving because the not only does the scale dump, but you get smaller. Yeah. You know, your your pant your your yeah, pant you buckle. Different. Yeah, you look different. So you start going like, "Oh, it's working. I'm going the right the right direction," not realizing that you're you're losing muscle, okay, as fast as you are losing yeah. body fat. Yep. To put it differently, just so if someone's confused watching this right now, so 20 pounds of body fat on a 100 pound person is 20 percent body fat, which is for a man that would be high body fat percentage. Okay, so if you had a 100 pound guy, 20 pounds of body fat. He's at 20% body fat. That's a lot of body fat for someone that weight. Now, if you took a 200 pound man who had the same amount of body fat, 20 pounds of body fat, it's 10% body fat. <laughs> that is lean. That's a six pack on the 200 pound man. So that's kind of how it works. On the flip side, you can gain weight on the scale and get leaner that's right. and get a leaner body fat percentage. So if everybody watching this right now lost zero pounds of body fat, but gained 10 pounds of muscle, your body fat percentage would automatically drop because now that 
amount of body fat you have on your body is a smaller percentage mm -hmm. of your all body weight, overall body weight. And this is why oftentimes I'd get clients whose weight would go up a little bit on the scale and they couldn't understand why they would keep getting compliments that right. they were looking leaner. They like, look better. Yeah, like this is so weird. My coworkers keep telling them I look leaner, but I gained like three or four pounds on the scale. How is this possible? I love this conversation because this was a very pivotal moment for me as a trainer because it, it completely changed the way I communicated this to my client, my weight loss clients, my clients that wanted to lose 50, yeah. 40, 50 plus pounds of fat. And this is, this is the beginning of when I would start having this conversation of, okay, mm -hmm. I know you hired me to lose 50 pounds, but what I'm going to tell you right now is this first month or two, I actually don't want to see anything come off the scale. Mm -hmm. Where just a couple of years before that, you know, I was on, I was in a hurry to show them weight loss. Yeah. So they would re-sign with me. It was like, yeah. oh, you want to lose 50 pounds. So they, let's say they bought 10 sessions. I got a month with them. Okay. I well, got to show them some, I gotta show them some yeah. results. Yeah. And so cut the calories, cardio, train them. And then at the end of the month, I'm like, we did 10 pounds. Yeah. All right, let's sign up for some more. And then before you know it, you hit this hard plateau or you go do the body fat percentage and realize, oh shit, they got fatter. So this was a, a complete shift in the way I looked and trained my clients going forward. And I started telling those clients that wanted to lose weight that, listen, I know that's your ultimate goal, but it's body fat that we really want to lose. That's it, because you could cut your leg off and lose 20 pounds. Like, right. That's not the kind of weight that you want to lose. It's about body fat percentage. And the difference between a lean, you know, if you're a female watching this, if you're a woman and you're like, I want to get down to, I don't know, I'll make up a number. I want to get down to 110 pounds. Forget that for a second. What you probably want is a lean body fat percentage. Right. And the weight on the scale is a bit arbitrary. It doesn't mean much. I've talked about this uh, many times on the podcast, but I used to have this female trainer that worked for me, and she was just she was lean and sculpted, and she lifted weights all the time, very athletic. And I would bring her in my office oftentimes to, to help sell memberships and personal training. Now, she wouldn't come in and sell the programs, it was usually when I had a, and this typically would happen with women because they were a little bit more reluctant to want to see the scale go up at all. And typically it's because I'm showing them the weights and I'm showing them the machines and we're doing a tour of the gym and they'll say something to me like, no, 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 I don't want to bulk up. I'm not trying to build. I just want to do with the treadmill. I just want to, and I'd explain kind of what we're talking about now. And then I'd do this challenge for them. And it was a very effective thing. It was an incredible sales tool. And I'd sit down with them and I'd say, I tell you what, I'm going to bring in one of my female trainers, and if you can guess her body weight within 15 pounds, I'll give you a free membership for a month. But if you can't guess, then you need to really strongly consider what I'm talking about. How does that sound? They'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll guess. I'd bring her in, and she was this five foot one, lean, tiny waist sculpted you know, female trainer, and they would always guess like 100 pounds, 105 pounds. She was 130 pounds, but she was small yeah. because muscle is very dense. Muscle takes up about two-thirds – the amount of space that body fat does. Um, but this is a good conversation it's because- a, It's a really good conversation yeah. because this is, I think this is one of the number one reasons why people struggle with fat loss because it's not as simple as we make. I know there's a lot of stuff right now where we you you hear the law of thermodynamics, right? You have calories in, calories yeah. out. That's all it is. Like, oh, if I'm, you're eating this much, cut it down to this. But it's not that simple because if you take somebody, let's say they're maintenance, right? So they, they don't lose or gain 2,000 calories. They want to lose X amount of pounds of fat, so they decide to reduce their calories. They drop down to 1,500 calories. Okay, seems fine, but what happens if the, of those 1,500 calories, they're only getting 20 grams of protein for the day? What is going to happen? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they lose muscle. Or what if they're not mm -hmm. sending a, a, hey, I need muscle signal? Right, right. And, then, and they're doing training. more cardio-based exercise, right? They got circuit training going on. Right. So you got circuit training going on, so they're lifting really light weights. So they're not really sending a loud muscle-building yeah. signal. They're burning tons of calories. They're eating 20 to 30 grams of protein. What is going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Your body is going to pare down muscle. You're not feeding it enough to keep that muscle on. Just thinking You're not sending a signal general. loud enough yeah. to keep muscle. And so what ends up happening is, yeah, the scale goes down, but they just slow their metabolism. Yeah, down. Your body, keep this in mind, uh, this is an evolutionary trait, right? So we evolved for thousands and thousands and thousands of years in an environment where calories were very tough to come by. Very Starvation was one of the number one threats. It's no longer that way, but this is how we typically evolved. And so what your body is very good at doing two things. It will, number one, adjust your behaviors to get you back at calorie maintenance. In other words, if you're eating lower than you're burning, it'll ramp up. Uh, appetite. It'll lower energy to try and get you to sit and not move as much. It'll do all kinds of things to your behaviors to get you to burn less calories or especially eat more calories, right? So that's one. 
The other thing that it does is it tries to change <laughs> the calorie burn side of the formula by reducing your caloric requirements. And one of the most effective ways to do this, besides getting you to not move as much, one of the most effective ways to do this is to shrink the size of your engine. So it's like, a, it's like if you have a car, if I want to make my V8 you know, Suburban burn less gas and I had the ability to snap my fingers and give myself a four-cylinder engine, that would be one of the most effective ways to do it was cut the engine. In fact, you know, newer models, in fact, They'll do that. They'll switch from four-cylinder to eight-cylinder, yeah. depending on how you drive, to reduce the amount of gas consumption. So what your body does is it's always constantly working its hormones and manipulating its own tissues and your behaviors to keep that balance. So that's the challenge. That's why weight loss is so hard, and that's why it's so hard to maintain. So what we can do, the most effective thing we can do in this scenario is understand this and say, what are some things that I can do that will convince my body. So that's what you got to do. You got to convince your body to increase my calorie burn, right? Now I can force it by just moving more all the time, but your body's very, very good at making movement more efficient. It can actually learn and, and teach itself to burn less and less calories over time doing the same type of activity. And it's very good at doing this. The most effective way to manipulate the calorie burn is to build the size of your engine, right? gain muscle. So you have to, if, if you really want to lose weight in an effective way, you have to tell your body, we need more muscle. We need strength. It's more important to us that we're strong and then we have muscle for our survival mm -hmm. than it is to ha have a lower calorie burning engine. That's the argument that you're basically making to your body. So how do you do that? Well, you lift weights. Yeah. Now your body, the stress that your body is is sensing is well, we need strength, but that's not all. You also have to feed it appropriately because if you don't feed it appropriately, you can send all the strength muscle building signal you want. That's your right. body's like, we just don't have the capacity well, we, to we, build more we muscle. We try to bring this up because, I mean, this strategy, what does it provide you with? Like an increased appetite. You have more options and flexibility in your diet. Like having more strength for longevity, you yeah. avoid arthritis and pains and unnecessary, you know, abilities that are, you're just going to lose those abilities when you don't have strength and you're not going to be able to do as much. And so, it, and plus you get, you're going to get better sleep. You're going to have more energy. There's just a lot more benefits with that strategy than to just pare down uh, you know your overall mass and, and and slim down. Yeah, and then the other thing to consider too is when you are in that when you understand this and you're like, look, the scale is one metric, but it's part of a big uh, pie that I need to take a look at. And, and a most more important piece of the pie <coughs> is body fat percentage because that means much more than just the scale, as we just explained, performance and strength and all those things. Let's look at the whole picture. Let's consider that. Let's let's adjust our training nutrition around that. And then when we do, and we're sending the right signal to build muscle and we're feeding the body appropriately, what the body does, so let's say the body says, okay, I'm getting the message. We need strength. We need muscle. Oh, and we have the nutrients to do so. So we feel safe doing so. It doesn't stop there. Here's one of my favorite things that happens. Your body organizes its messenger hormones or just its hormones to do this, right? So what kind, what hormone profile tells your body to build more muscle. Well, in men and in women, a muscle building hormone profile is a youth hormone profile. It's a similar one to the one you have when you're feeling great and you're in your teens and 20s. It's higher testosterone, both in men and women, balanced estrogen and progesterone in women, better growth hormone, better insulin sensitivity. So it's like this incredible cascading effect. Now, if you don't do any of that and you ignore that and you just look at the scale and all you care about is losing weight on the scale, you very often will fall into the trap of telling my body to lose muscle, pare it down. Now my hormones are organized in a way to reduce muscle mass. This is why over dieting, over cardio in men results in lower testosterone levels. In women, you see the effects of HPA axis dysfunction, which we used to call adrenal fatigue back in the day. I know people roll their eyes, but that's what we used to kind of refer to it as. Higher cortisol, estrogen and progesterone imbalanced. And then, as you said, Adam, you hit this nasty plateau. So you're like, oh, I'm eating 1,500 calories. I lost 10 pounds. Oh, no, it's not working anymore. Uh, I guess I go down to 1,200 calories. Lost four, five more pounds. Now what? Go down to 1,000 calories? Okay, and then you get to your goal, and you're like, uh, "I got to eat a thousand calories for the rest of my life." Yeah, right. Like, how is this going to yeah. possibly? You're, you're miserable, there. and that's why you know yeah. eighty-five plus percent 
put it all back on. Yes. Because yep. at one point, and, and uh, do you blame them? At no. one point, you go, my goal was to lose 50 pounds. I busted my ass to get 30 to 40 off. Mm -hmm. I'm eating only 1,000 calories a day. I'm training five mm -hmm. to seven days a week. This is fucking miserable. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather be a little fatter. Yeah, I know. Right. And then you just accept that's what happens. That's yeah. exactly what happens to people, but it doesn't have to be that way. But it, 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 and it really, it, it's that shift. Like you have to start looking at, okay, I know this is my, my long-term goal is to lose the 50 pounds or whatever it is, but I first want to build a, a metabolism that's going to help me versus working against your metabolism by instantly just cutting yeah, calories. Yeah, it's like this. I'll, I'll use an analogy, right? It's like you got to paint uh, a, a huge fence. You got this huge fence you got to paint. happy trees. And you're going to just paint it with one coat. And you have a paintbrush. It's one of those little tiny paintbrushes that you could do little details on canvases with. And then you also have a, a roller or a spray, you know, a machine that sprays paint, right? And what do you do? You pick the freaking paintbrush and you sit there. And after a year, you get like a third of the way there and you're like, I'm done, man. I can't keep doing this. It's taking forever. All you had to do was pick up the freaking the, 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 the spray machine or pick up the roller and you would have been done in three months because you would have done something. It would have done it in a way that was far more effective. So this is, and, and it's so frustrating. And the reason why I brought this up is because people often do what you said, Adam, is they, the, oh, body fat test, it's not accurate. Oh, I, it's, it's long. There's no way yeah. this could possibly happen. Oh no, it happens. It's actually more often. Well, than yeah, because you're yeah. still doing work, and so you attribute the work as progress, even yes. though you know might not be taking you to the desired outcome. Yeah. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here, and be sure to subscribe.